Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're tackling a very common question at the start of Ultimate Team every single year. As we're opening packs, getting players, we're faced with this decision. Do you sell and take the coins now, or do you keep and hope for that price to rise as the market potentially rises as well especially this year with evolutions being added to the process it is so important to really know this early game market and that's what we're going to try to understand in this video today so as you're starting fc25 you know whether to sell or to keep that specific player if you're excited for the video today drop a thumbs up on it and of course subscribe if you are new now let's say from the start why does this whole conversation of selling or keeping even matter as we're talking about this before we're even on fc25 well coins are so important guys coins are king as we all always say in this game if you have coins that go and buy players do sbcs and stuff like that you're going to have more fun on this game and it's not always just a matter of making coins it's sometimes just a matter of knowing when to sell and when to buy or when not to do both of those things because when everybody else is losing coins if you're not that's kind of like making coins in a sense as well. So it's just very important for being market proficient on this game. Not that you have to be crazy spending a lot of time on this market, looking at a lot of player prices and looking at a lot of graphs like we're going to do today. But if you understand a little bit of the supply and demand, that's going to put you so far ahead in this game. It's so easy to lose coins. That is how EA set up this game. They make it easy for us to lose coins so that we have to spend FC points, right? But we're going to be a little bit smarter than that and not have to go through all of that. So let's start off with cards that you want to sell. As you're opening your first packs on FC25, there's going to be some player prices that I want to show you from last year in FC24. They're going to paint the picture for cards that you're going to want to sell as soon as you can, or at least in those first couple of days. Adiemi, very popular attacker from last year in FC24. He started at 23,000 coins, went up to 35,000 coins, and that was his peak. Literally, guys, the day that everybody could log on to the game during early access, which was the 22nd of Friday last year, he peaked at 35,000 coins. After that, it only took him three, three or four weeks, and he was 5,000 coins. This is the type of card that you'll want to sell right away. Notice, 80 rated. All of these lower rated cards are the ones that we're all thinking about. We're starter teams right now and building those starter teams, but these are the cards that only have that gameplay demand and starter squad demand in the first week or so of the game because after that we're getting coins and we're upgrading from an 81 rated St. Maximin to somebody like an 84 rated or an 85 or an 86 or we're doing an SBC. We all know the content that EA drop is more than ever, right? There's more SBC players, objective players, cards and packs through promos, evolutions now on top of that. These gold prices do not last long and that is why when you're packing those low rated players at the start of the game, it is best to sell them. So some examples Examples of players like that in FC25, Jean-Claire Todibo. This guy is in so many starter squads. It is insane, guys. This is a card that's probably going to peak in price in the first, I don't know, four to five days of the game. Probably the first three days, if we're being completely honest. He would be a card. Let's say he's 15K. I'm just going to guess. 15K for this card, somewhere around there. That's maybe his peak price during the first couple of days. You will want to sell if you pack this card then. Another reason why opening those 4,600 FC points is the best to do as early on as you can because these cards are never going to be 15K again, right? We talked about that a couple of videos ago. I'll link that up here if you uh, missed it or want to check it out. But that's a card you're going to want to sell. Here's another one. 79 rated Joao Neves. Again, low rated. Basically stuff that is 82 rated and below. It's going to get packed a lot. Even though the packs aren't that great at the beginning of the game, these are the cards that we're going to pack more than others, and that's going to impact our price in the long run. That's another type of card that you're going to want to sell. So take a look at your starter team and maybe some of the players that you're looking to build in that starter squad. Just think about, okay, 82 rated Yudogi, he's in the middle, but that's a card that's probably going to lose some value. Ferran Torres, 80 rated, he's going to drop off. I think of uh, Jan Oral Bissek, the insane center back that so many people are excited to use. That's a card that is definitely going to be dropping off because of the rating. Now, like I mentioned as well, starter squad players. That um, Todibo center back that we just looked at, definitely a starter squad player. Same thing with Vandevin, guys. 82 rated, but this guy has a lot of hype. He might be a more expensive starter squad player, but to me, 
Yeah, he's got 88 pace, and yes, this card has so much hype, but we've seen this same story play out so many times before. He is going to drop in price. His max price is probably going to be, I don't know, 30,000 coins, somewhere in there. Maybe he goes above that, and he's hard to pack, kind of like a Furlan Mendy type situation. Maybe he goes to 40k. This is just a guess, right? I'm saying 30 to 40k for him, and I think that's going to be in the first three, four, five, six days of the game. No later than that, and then he's going to drop off. This is a sell early on as well for me, and if you're like, Nate, 82 rated, he's going to be really hype and really expensive, and he's going to go up in price, right? Look at Upamakano last year. Upamakano peaked at 24,000 coins. He did rise up a little bit from the very early parts of the game, but then after that, three weeks later, he's 6,000 coins. Vandevin, probably one of the same things that's going to happen to him too, because remember, a lot of these players, like who have Vandeven in their starter team, they're not going to use him forever. They're going to upgrade to somebody like Saliba or to VVD or maybe switch leagues and go to a Rudiger or a Raujo or Kunde pretty quick. It doesn't take long to upgrade to some of these higher rated cards. And so the low rated aspect of these starter team players and the fact that they are starter team players only and that they're going to get moved past to higher rated better cards super quick is why you want to sell these guys early on. Loftus Cheek, he's going to be more expensive this year than ever. His card looks cracked. Syria items look really good too. Links to Pulisic, links to Tomori, also great starter players. He's going to be expensive in the first couple of days. That is a player that you want to sell as well. As we look at some of these graphs, guys, as we kind of take a look through these cards from FC24, you notice the trend, right? Gold cards do not hold their value. And that is a trend that is evident every single year. So even for some of the cards that we might say hold because they're going to go up, it's not a very long hold because we have more promos and more cards drop in this game than ever. And that just makes a lot of these cards drop off. Now, I also want to do a quick shout out here to Renato Sanchez because he was a really, really meta starter team player that played above his stats. Remember these Renato Sanchez cards, FIFA 22, FIFA 21, maybe even FIFA 23, he had a pretty cracked card. He was extinct this year at a um, price range of like 27,000 coins, I believe it was. And he maintained his max price for the first couple of days. Again, low rated, even though really meta has a ton of hype, low rated guys. Look what happens. 27,000 coins. A couple of weeks later, he's 5,000 coins. Prices drop and they drop really quick. So those are the cards that you're going to want to be selling sooner rather than later. Now, the next question is when to sell. And as we look at a lot of these graphs, especially from last year in FC24, you notice a certain thing, either a peak on a Monday or Tuesday or on most of the starter players, you see this, a peak on that first Friday when the early access, when we're able to get on the game for the very first time through the Ultimate Edition pre-order early access, because that is when everybody is getting those 4,600 FC points and they are able to go on the game and build those starter teams. One thing that was different last year about FC24 as well was we didn't have a very long web app period. In years past, sometimes the web app would drop four, five, six days even before we could actually get onto the game. And people had a decent amount of time to work through the market, build up some coins, and even buy some of these players to their starter teams. Last year, there was so much demand for buying teams straight away because people were just getting onto the game for the first time and having the opportunity to play games and build teams. These prices exploded. There was actually, if you look at a lot of these graphs when we're comparing them, there was a lot of FOMO buying. We're going to continue to talk about that in the video today in that early game market. Looking back to last year, obviously it's hindsight. Last year we were like, oh my gosh, these prices are flying. This is insane. But there's a lot of FOMO buying. A lot of people got on the game. Prices skyrocketed for a couple of days and then they dropped. So for these cards that are sells, in my opinion, I think you got to sell between Friday the 20th this year with the, uh, the calendar, the way the game is dropping, the 20th of Friday and probably the 24th of the Tuesday as well. Because if you hold too long, what you're going to see is once we get closer to the full standard edition release, prices are going to be down already because people are going to be expecting the pack supply. There's going to be a promo on that first Friday, a lot more people coming onto the game, a lot more packs being opened and more content that people can sell their starter teams for to go and upgrade to new players. So that is definitely when I would sell between the first day or second day you get on the game. That might be the peak like it was for Adiemi last year, like it was for Alan St. Maximin. That might be the peak, might be within the first two to three days after that, but that is always your time to sell these lower rated starter team players which seems kind of crazy, right? Because you're like, Nate, I'm just getting on the game. Let me use some of these guys. I'm not saying you can't use them. All I'm saying is you want to be a little bit smarter with them because like we said in the intro, avoiding losing coins is almost like making coins. When the entire market's being devalued, 
but your your value of coins is staying the same or it's not dropping very much compared to everybody else's, you're putting yourself further ahead of everybody else. So that's one thing I want to talk about with these lower rated cards here. A lot of the cards that we just looked at would be sells. And once again, as you're looking through the database, you're looking through your starter team and the cards you pack in the first day or so, 80 rated and below specifically, but even some of the 81 and 82s, you will want to be very, very careful with. Now, I touch on evolutions right here for just a quick second. Some players, Lamina Mall is going to be such an interesting one to watch. So many people are going to want to evolve this card, but I don't think there's going to be many cards except for a few, but many cards that are in starter teams are going to be worth saving for evolutions because they're probably not going to fit evolutions right away. It's going to take a couple of weeks for them to fit those. And those prices are going to drop off a lot from where they are in the first week until they hit an evolution and maybe go up big. We'll have to see because the new Evo system this year seems like it's going to fit a lot more cards. But I'm not going to tell you to go buy Lamine Yamal week one, maybe when he's 10, 15, 20K. Who knows how much he's going to be? I'm not going to tell you to pay that much for him when probably two weeks later he's going to be 5K. And he maybe goes up to 20 again for an evolution. You know what I'm saying? But I think for a lot of these cards, you would want to wait. You would want to sell them and not wait, rather, uh, for the evolution to come out. Wait for the Evo, then pick up the card or wait for a leak or wait at least until the card drops off a lot before you stock it into your club. So that's the cards that you want to sell, right? The lower rated, cheap starter team players. Now, flip the script. Let's talk about cards you would want to hold. Now, we're looking at more expensive, middle tier to top tier players. If I had to put a price range on it, probably like... 50k or more is a good place to kind of say, all right, if the card that you pack is 50,000 coins and it's the first day of the game on the early access release, probably going to want to hold that card. Maybe even if it's the full release standard edition access to the game, maybe a little bit of a hold as well. And we'll talk through that here in just a second. VVD, obviously crazy card last year in FC24, so much hype. He was the most used gold card in the entire game. He was the most used card in total, I think, in the entire game last year. This is the top center back in the game once again. He's only one of three players that has Aerial Plus once again in the game, which people remember was so OP. We'll see if it's even OP this year. And the meta actually matters a lot more for these top tier, more expensive cards. Now, just looking at a card like this, it's kind of obvious that you would want to hold it, right? Looking at VVD's graph last year, even before people knew how crazy meta he was, he was 264k during the rare web app days when nobody could pack anything because everything was untradeable. Everybody gets onto the game. And this is the difference. This is the difference between guys like Adiemi, who peaked on that web app day because everybody's buying him. He's 35k. He goes up. His highest price is on the day when VBD's price is at its lowest. VVD goes from 250, 260 to 180,000 coins. And then look where he is a couple days later, 313,000 coins. That is an insane rise. 130,000 coins of appreciation in five days, less than five days. Crazy, right? And that's the sort of rise we could have again this year if the web app is similar in FC25. I'm not saying it's going to be the exact same for VVD. I'm just saying this is the type of card you will want to hold. If you're opening your FC points, 4,600 of them, right, from the pre-order, and you pack VVD or you pack Saliba or you pack Fede Valverde or Jude Bellingham, that's the type of player you are 100% going to want to hold and not sell right away because they will appreciate in value. Now, depending on how long you wait until you sell that card, because sure, if you pack VVD or Jude Bellingham right away, you don't want to just sell it in two or three days. You probably want to play with him for a while, right? And that's going to be an insane card to use. Totally get that. We're going to factor that into this conversation. But I think you're looking at a hold here for a lot of these top tier, more meta players. Now, again, the word is meta. The word is top tier. These are the type of cards that people can't afford right away. And if you get lucky enough to pack one, or if you have enough coins to afford one, this is the type of card you invest in as well. The VVD graph right here, 180K to 300,000 coins. Let's go look at Jude Bellingham's card from last year, 86 rated. I don't know how this graph looked last year. Oh yeah, almost the same thing, man. So Jude Bellingham, let's just scroll back here, went down. He was 160k. Boom. Everybody gets in the game. 98,000. He goes up to 124. He then does go back down a little bit. And then he has a nice rise because it he ended up being really meta, really hyped. But you see this rise here, right? Again, same thing as VVD. He goes low. 
he goes back up and that was kind of a peak time for him but what happens after that is all kind of based on the meta and so when it comes to a sell time if you hold one of these players that is high tier you know value wise you get lucky with the pack pull how long you're going to be holding this card it really just depends on the meta after that because there was a lot of hype last year for this card, this is a card we're never going to forget. For FC24, women are in the game for the first time. Everybody wants to try them out. Like, how good are they in game? Some of them look absolutely crazy. Like, this Rolfeld, there's so much hype for her. This first week, she goes from 20k to 70, almost 80,000 coins. I remember being there. She did, she did sell for 80k on this Monday or Tuesday at her peak price. And then after that, people realized she wasn't that meta. Boom, straight down to 33,000 coins just a couple of days later. That's the difference between a card that maybe you held. If you packed her here, you held and you could have made a lot of coins, but you know, the price came down so quick that maybe you didn't sell at the optimal time. It's going to be tough to judge in those early times. It's going to be really hard to time it all out, but you can tell right away if it's a card that's higher rated, it's meta, it's a card that people can't afford right away. It kind of makes sense, right? They're going to be upgrading to that, which means the price is going to rise. And then after that, like we've been saying and starting to start to discuss, it comes down to what is meta. This Jules Kunde went from 96k, peaked on that same day that VVD did, and Jude Bellingham at 177, dipped down a little bit, but look at how well he maintains his price between 150 and 180,000 coins into October because he was meta so many people wanted to use this kunde because he had a playstyle plus he had the center back and the right back compatibility french barcelona links that is a type of card that you want to watch and also look into as an investment so if you pack that put in your team and rock with it for a couple of weeks because you're going to be safe most likely with that price not losing as much of value as uh, of course those lower rated players so when it comes down to cards you want to hold it's those higher rated meta cards that people will be upgrading to in their teams because they can't afford them yet. And again, when we talk about how long you want to hold them, this, this Kunde is maybe a bit of a bad example because he did a really, really nice rise and held his price until the end of October. Like you could have bought him here for 96K and you would not have been losing coins until November, which is crazy because a lot of these other cards, like the roll full that we looked at, she was 18K. She went back down to 18K by the beginning of October. Even the, the Virgil van Dyke, right? You got, could have bought him here at 180. He was back down under 200K in October before going back up again. Um, some of the cards are going to lose value faster than that though like we saw with jude he went up he went back down 84 and then started to go up over time but some of these other graphs of cards that we're potentially not even looking at right now i'm just clicking through a few more that i have pulled up that were very meta but a lot of the rest of these graphs especially if they're not a couple hundred thousand coins they end up dropping off like especially your 30 40 50 up to a hundred thousand coin cards they will drop off a lot faster than this because once again once people use that card for a couple days, what a new SBC comes out, an evolution comes out, they're going to upgrade from that. So even for these cards that we're going to hold in the early stages of the game, it's probably not worth holding too much more than two, three weeks. Use them in your team for sure. Enjoy the card, but don't hold too long because sometimes you outhold the amount of profit that you could make on the card you end up losing coins sure it could help you win games and champs and stuff like that but you don't want to hold a card for too long and always now with how much content in the game these cards drop off faster than ever before but again it does depend on the meta like this salah last year he was out of packs so ignore this first part here but salah was 200k he went down to 199 and then started to come back up to 280 as people realized the finesse plus meta was a really good thing. Now, a couple of the best risers, let's say you get really lucky in the early game and pack an insane card, or you're making coins and you want some of the best investments early game, it's always the rare stuff. Icons, heroes, and informs from Team of the Weeks 1 and 2. And we'll talk about investments and evolutions here in just a second as well to end off the video. Informs, guys. Team of the Week 1 is always hyped. And for good reason. Because this Salah card... Just the same thing as the other metas was the cheapest on that Friday of early access. VVD was his cheapest then. Jude was his almost cheapest then, right? Kunde was his cheapest then. Those cards we just looked at. This informed Salah, 422k. He goes up to 700,000 coins in just five days. Look at that. Up 300k almost in just a couple of days. Now, he does cool off, but he maintains his price because he's out of packs. And that's the best investment i mentioned here because these cards are a lot more rare we love the informs in the early game especially team leaks one and two because they're supplied a whole lot less now i talk about the icons as well del piero oh what do you know same thing 
his lowest price was on that same weekend when everybody's getting onto the game. Not many people can afford a 300,000 coin icon. Oh, he's got a finesse plus. He goes from 380 to 650,000 coins, maintains his price, goes all the way to 800K by the beginning of November. If you can get your hands on an icon, you're set. You're going to basically make coins, especially if it's a meta icon. You're going to be doing great things. Same thing with the heroes as well. So those are some of your top tier cards, your cards that you're going to want to hold because they will appreciate in value over those first couple of weeks in the game. Now, evolutions. You saw me click on that silver card right here. These are the types of players, I think, that you want to hold straight off from the beginning of the game for evolutions, unless they're expensive. Minted, 95 rated silver. This card might be selling for 4 or 5k in the early stage of the game, and you could sell him. But these are the types of players, when you're opening those bronze and silver packs in the early game, especially if they are tradable, yeah, you might be just sending all this to the club because you don't think it matters. But take a quick second just to take a peek at some of the cards that you send to the club. Look at the popular leagues and especially popular clubs and nations and just players that have hype overall. Guys, Mbappe's brother is in FC25. This card is going to go to 5, 10K extinct on the market a couple different times for evolutions whenever they drop. And he's probably going to have a decent value on the market at all times because people are going to want to buy this card. Just because it's Ethan Mbappe, they'll want to link him with Kylian Mbappe. That's going to happen, right? So this is the type of card that if you pack, you would hold. Chuck that in your club and just wait on it. And that's one thing that I want to point out in this video as well, because it's those bronzes and silvers that, yes, could get you banned. But if you're just having one card in your club from pack pulling it, you're not going to get banned. If you sell one of them at almost max price or whatever it's going to be, oh, you know, usually with these bronze and silvers, we suggest do not list them at max. Like if Minta is selling at 10K extinct, list them at like 9.5. Minimizes your risk of getting banned. Even if you pack pulled the card, there were people last year that pack pulled the card, had it on the transfer list, had two or three of them that they packed all, listed them for max price in a short time span when the player went extinct, and boom, coin wipe. So you don't want to mess with that. And before we know that the system is fixed, um, just stick one on the transfer list, keep one in the club that you see, and then list it for just under max price to hopefully avoid one of those bans. But those are the types of players that you'll want to watch out for, those bronzes and silvers. And once we get to wear some of those meta golds, I know we looked at Lamine Yamal. He's maybe not the best example because um, he's probably not ever going to be that super cheap. But those are the types of players you want to keep in your club and wait for them to rise once they get to a low price. Like, again, I don't want to buy somebody like Alan St. Maximin in the early game on 25 um, when he's five, six, seven K to wait for an evolution, you want to wait until he's like a thousand coins, then buy him and stick him in your club for an evolution. And same thing for evolutions. It goes for informs guys. These cards last year, they did not rise. Well, some of the, the discard ones, people were investing on this Aldisari. He'd never moved, right? Discard 11,000 coins. Well, team of the weeks, they're going to go up for either an Evo or for a team of league SBC requirement at some point. Stocking this card in forms in your club, especially the higher rated you can get, the better. Because this year, especially with the new EVO requirements, like I mentioned again, they're probably going to go up even faster than they did in years past. Um, just in terms of fitting an evolution, people will want to upgrade those cards. So, yes, there's meta in form investments like this Lamptey last year was really cheap 30K all the way to 90,000 coins. Card exploded, made people a ton of coins. But on the flip side, Always stock some of those clubbed, bigger club, bigger nation, and just more hype players that have informs um, in your club for 10,000 coins. You will not regret it. You might be holding for a while, but you will not regret it. So that's kind of the early game market in a synopsis, guys, and whether you want to sell, whether you want to hold, and what type of evolutions players to look out for here in the early parts of FC25 as we get under the game. We're almost there, guys, just a couple days away. But this is hopefully a video that maybe you can even resort back to and take a look back to to see what you should do as you're packing players at the beginning of FC25. Hopefully it helped, guys. If it did, make sure to drop a thumbs up on the video. We're going to be covering the market, of course, every single day as this game progresses and goes on. The market's going to move quick. The new features are going to impact the market in ways that we still have yet to figure out. And, of course, there's going to be a lot of content to follow along the way. So if you're excited for the FC25 journey, drop a thumbs up on the video. Comment down below if you have any questions again. And subscribe to the channel if you are new. See you guys for a video tomorrow. It's been the Day for the Count. See you there. Peace out.